Hi, everybody. This is the investing teacher, high school science teacher, teaching others how to invest. In this video, I want to go over Meet Zoom, which is an online savings account and has very high interest rates, much higher than any other banks. However, there's some deception to it. So let's get right to it. All right, so I want to go over the website meetbeam.com, which is an online savings account, an app that pays you daily. All growth earned up to 4% yearly interest. Most banks right now are offering 1% to 1.5% interest if you're lucky. Uh, I currently have Capital One Bank, which is less than 2%. And if you go to a bank or a regular checking account bank and then get a savings account at a credit union, you might be getting 0.5 or less percent. So how do we get 4% interest? Apparently, there's a lot of different ways. All growth get paid daily, no fees. There's 24-7 access. You get your money back at any time. You have a nationwide community of banks. It is FDIC insured, just like a standard bank. Normally, you get 0.01% a year. How is Beam able to pay 4 to 8%? Now, traditional banks often earn 4 to 8% per year, but only give you an average of 0.01, and then they loan the rest out for houses, car loans, mortgages, and whatnot. And then they keep the difference. That's essentially how most banks run, right? No fees. How do they make money? Software is the service revenues. So essentially, when you put a bank deposit down, they could use that as leverage to loan out even more money than they have in the deposits. Usually a 10 to 1 ratio. Um, in the early 2000, 2008 crash with finances, a lot of them were leveraged more than that. And then the government essentially stepped in saying you cannot over leverage yourself. So that's why they're able to hopefully be safer. How easy it is to withdraw. Doing an unnumber, unlimited number of free transfers, funds arrive in three to five business days. So everything's sounding great, 4% interest. Let's say you have $10,000. You get $400 of interest a year compared to say, as I say, 0.01. Ten dollars a year, so a three hundred and ninety dollar difference. Absolutely no risk. FDIC insured. So what could go wrong? Well, there was an article on CNBC recently showing how people are having problems getting their money back, and the link will be down below in the description of this video. Startup promise. Startups promise higher interest rates on savings. Now some customers are struggling to get their money back. Again, it's a pretty recent um, account here about a year ago. Some customers want to withdraw their money. It's an indefinite wait for these funds. There's a lot of ads on social media. I saw this one in my Facebook. Earn as much as 7% interest on your savings. Essentially, if you share this to get referrals, you'll increase your percentage rates and whatnot. There's a joint investigation by CNBC TV, CNBC.com, showed we're having trouble processing customer withdrawals. Some spoke with CNBC saying that's been pending for months and repeated answers from Beam saying that it's coming. So Brandon Earl, 36, opened an account with $15,000 earlier this year. Heard it from a friend, because a friend probably gave a referral to increase that interest rate. Goal is to grow the money, eventually help pay his children's college educations, five and two year old baby, of course. Then he got no response from the company in August when he tried to withdraw his money. Then he received the message that there are delays due to COVID. From there, it got worse. The app temporarily went down last month. He saw other people in reviews having problems with it. It's been over two months and hasn't received his money yet. So there are quite a few people that are having issues. So at this, this point, I want to go over basic risk and return. With more return, there will be more risk. It's pretty much as simple as that. Um, if you're putting money in an FDIC insured savings account that's paying a low interest rate, you're pretty much guaranteed to be getting that money back. Even if the bank fails, uh, your money will be FDIC insured, meaning that you'll be able to get that money back um, from other bank accounts if they transition or if they sell to another institution. With these high interest rates, you should be having a little thought in your head, like, is this actually real? And again, people are having problems taking out this money. So with a higher return will be higher risk. 
Now, technically, this shouldn't be happening if it's FDIC insured. So it just could be awful customer service, which is definitely a risk factor as well. Um, I'm currently putting 100% of my retirement accounts into mutual funds and ETFs and individual stocks that typically pay pretty high in dividends. It is no free lunch there. If a company is paying 3% in dividends per year, the stock price could easily fluctuate and go much lower than 3%. I've had Intel, for instance, this week go down 10% in a day. So that lost a few years of dividend payments in that company in one day. So I'm aware of the risk in owning these dividend companies. Um, I'm aware that the returns can fluctuate in the short term. In the very long term, though, I think dividend growing companies should be fine. As you go longer in your time horizon, if we're going decades out, the risk of holding a stock at, say, $50 a share compared to $48 a share is pretty negligible. In the short term, you go from 50 to 48, you lost quite a bit of money in a pretty short time period. Intel was at about $53 a share, and now it's currently at $45 a share. So a pretty significant drop in just a week. So just be aware of risk and return as you invest in possible riskier assets. You have the opportunity for higher returns, but also be aware that in the short term, you may not necessarily get those returns. I think for most companies in the stock market, you need at least five years to see any significant benefits and ideally 10 to plus years. When you look at the S&P 500, um, pretty much every decade that's ever been around, they've had positive returns. I think there was one slightly negative return in 2000 to 2010 because of two recessions that we had. But otherwise, longer time horizon will help mitigate some of that risk. So again, I'm the investing teacher, high school science teacher, teaching others how to invest. Please like, subscribe, share this with other teachers and other viewers that are interested in finances. If you have any questions, let me know. Like always, I read all the comments and will respond. And I'll talk to you guys next time.